It's a beautiful day. It is July 17th. It's around 10.45 a.m. and it's about 75 degrees. So it's going to be a warm and humid day. Very humid today. So I just want to walk through the garden and show you guys what's growing. I have a little bit of tending to do. I need to do some harvesting and maybe tying some things up. Uh, but before I get started, I just want to walk through real quick and just show you guys how everything is growing here in the little square foot garden. As you remember, I'm growing all of this in about six to seven inches of soil. The sides of my beds are eight inches, and so normally the soil settles at around six inches. And underneath the beds, I have a layer of weed block, so it's filled in with males mix, okay? And we haven't had a lot of rain here in the last two weeks, so I've had to hand water. Um, so basically over here in this bed, um, I have some tomatoes. This is my second planting of tomatoes. And this is called an Uncle Mark Bagby. It's kind of a brandy wine tomato plant. It is a potato leaf variety. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll show you real quick. Um, right here is the leaf of um, the Uncle Mark Bagby. And I think brandy wine is also that way. And then over here is a regular leaf tomato plant. And so um, down here, I think this one's called a Thessaloniki, a little small, about six ounce um, tomato, which is real juicy. In the middle here, I have what's called a Thai pink egg. They're setting fruit now. And then over here is just yellow pear. And I've been picking a lot of those already. And it's just climbing right up the little arch here. And so, I expect that it'll probably cross over in about August and be up about probably eight feet high. So we'll see, maybe seven, eight feet high. And then over here, I have the um, Cherokee Purple, or it might be beef steak. I think it's Cherokee Purple because I bought this at the Home Improvement Store. Let me see what we have down here. Yep, Cherokee Purple. I usually end up buying that one instead of growing it from seed just to save myself some time. But it won't be long before I'll be picking these. And what I might do, because I do like to have them vine ripened rather than picking them ahead of time and letting them rip, ripen inside, even though sometimes I've done that, especially if I have a problem with birds or, um, you know, possums, raccoons, I'll pick them early. But um, I'm, I'll show you, I like to cover these up with a little um, piece of sock footing, and I'll show you in just a minute. But that will disguise the tomato, and so... Um, the birds and even the insects can't get to them. And that's worked for me in the past. I did that for the first time about eight years ago. And so I'll probably do that with at least some of these little Cherokee purples that I really want to ripen up nice. And I think I planted these in late June. Just, just some more of extra plants that I had. Um, they're not getting sun at this very moment, but I think around 1130 the sun will start to hit these real good. And let's see, um, one of my pepper plants doing good. This one's not setting fruit yet, but this was one of my later plantings. Um, I have some onions, little red onions. I think they're called Flat of Italy. And I grew those from seed. So they're looking, you know, pretty good. I think I should be able to grab a few of those here very soon. And then we have some basil back here. It's doing okay. Most of my basil's in my container garden. And these are some jade bush beans. These um, are actually my second planting. And so I'll probably go ahead and harvest some of these today. Wonderful, wonderful little bean. And then this is the peach melon nasturtium. Not doing too well right here. Maybe because of the summer heat. Um, and then right here, I had some beets, and I grabbed those yesterday and made a wonderful salad. It was so good, and I'll try to share that recipe with you here soon. And then carrots, doing okay. Um, back over to this bed, um, I had some potatoes here that I harvested last week, and I'll plant some more beans in there today. Um, the yellow pear, you know, like I said, I've been picking these every day. And then back here, I have some peppers. That one's not quite ready. And then corn. This is the Country Gentleman corn. I have four plants right there. I planted those kind of late, so they don't look real big right now. But hopefully by fall, I'll have some corn. And then just a couple more basil plants, nasturtiums. This is a sugar baby watermelon. And it's just climbing right along. And I have a little watermelon started right here. So uh, that'll be just delicious. A fresh picked watermelon from the garden. And I'll go ahead and get a couple of these peppers today. This one 
um, I picked up at the Home Improvement Store. And it looks like that one's called a Carmen. So, um, just I uh, like to stuff peppers like this um, that are long and slender. They're really good stuffed. And then just, you know, sliced vertically and um, filled that way. It's just really a good way to cook peppers. And then a couple more pepper plants that I planted from seed. It looks like I've got one right down here. And then this one's starting to set a little bit of fruit too. And here are just some of the things I'm going to use to tend the garden today. I have a little bit of vermiculite over here to the left. Um, and then I have some compost. So this will be for planting seeds. Today I'm going to plant more jade, bush beans, and cucumbers. Um, my cucumbers haven't done as well for me this year. And it's because I had an early infestation of the cucumber beetle. And so I've been trying to stay ahead of it by planting ahead. And so, anyway, I'll be planting more beans and more cucumbers, which is still okay to do here in July because my first frost doesn't come until about mid-October. And so I did a video on that last year for you to show you what you could plant in the midsummer as far as summer vegetables and still be able to get a harvest before your last frost day, I mean, before your first frost day. Right here in the middle are the little um, footy things I was going to tell you I'm going to tie up the um, tomatoes with. And so these right here will just slide right over a tomato and then I'll secure them on there with a twist tie. And that'll kind of keep the birds and the little stink bugs and things like that off of the uh, tomato. And I'll also sprinkle out a little bit more of the tomato and vegetable food. Okay, so over here I have just the Thessaloniki tomatoes and it looks like they're going to get a little bit of a sunburn there. Hopefully not, but I had a hornworm on here yesterday. And this is what hornworm damage looks like. They'll just chew right off your, they'll chew your plant right down, take all the leaves off. So I just hand removed that one because they, they're camouflaged pretty good, but if you look real close, first you'll notice the damage, and then if you look real close, you'll see the worm. And then this one, let's see what this tomato plant is. Really setting a lot of fruit. I think this one is a red beefsteak. So a lot of tomatoes on there. And then the greasy beans, just a load of these. I'll go ahead and get these today. I always look forward to my first big pot of greasy beans every summer. They're so wonderful. So there we go on those. I'll have a lot of those to pick. And I have some beautiful dill heads. Some are turning green and so I will let those dry and use them for dill seed. And then down here is coriander which I can go ahead and pull this plant and let those seeds dry and I'll have some fresh coriander to use for cooking. Yes sweetie? What? No, you're fine. What is it? Yeah, you can have the rest of that. <laughs> okay, so right now you can have it. I just took a little sip earlier. And then down here are some more fingerling potatoes, and I harvested a lot of those last week. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the rest of those out today. And then over here, this was my first planting of jade bush beans and I think this was in early May and I enjoyed harvesting off of these uh, the end of June um, for about two or three weeks and a lot of times if I just hang on and, and I'm patient I'll start to know uh, some new flowers but right now they're just now starting to come out I won't get near the harvest that I got like in early June I mean late June and early July um, so a lot of times I'll just replant my bush beans just because I know I'm not going to get a nice another nice big harvest from those. Okay, so over here I have some more fingerling potatoes and sh shallots right back in there that are falling over. Those are ready. Uh, down here I have some celery, which has kind of just stayed that way almost all year. <laughs> it hasn't really grown much, but it's been shaded a lot too. And then I have another cucumber plant here. And so that's another jade cucumber plant. And then here is cilantro. Now as we get towards the fall, I'll just take these seeds off and I'll just toss them right into the soil. And I'll just have little cilantro plants pop up everywhere. 
um, that rain will force them down into the soil so there's really not a whole lot of work that I have to do so a lot of times that's how I'll just replant my um, plants so this is my fourth bed and I had uh, potatoes here last week so I'll replant that little area and then I have some turnip greens which I've cut back they don't like the uh, hot summer sun and then over here um, pepper plant I have one pepper on there but it did get a little bit of a sunburn on one side so I don't know that I can salvage this pepper we'll see how that does some Thai hairy lemon basil just smells just like lemon more um, coriander seed so all this is uh, I need to go ahead and harvest this and let it dry. It's really a lot of that on here. And then put peanuts right down in here. So I'm growing peanuts this year because I love boiled peanuts. Here in the south we like to boil our peanuts. And so they are flowering now. And if you're not familiar with um, how peanuts grow, that, fla that flower will actually grow down into the ground. And then the peanuts will grow underneath the soil. So they flower above ground and then they um, grow underneath the ground. More jade bush beans and I think this is purslane back here. I didn't plant it but I think that's what that is. Uh, and then some shisho, the purple shisho, and then more Cherokee purple tomatoes. A whole lot of these actually. Let me go over here to the other side. So I've got some more tomatoes. I'll probably go ahead and tie these up, um, cover them up. They're starting to crack a little bit, but that's because we went, we had a lot of rain, and then we went our period without rain, and then we got a lot of rain again. So sometimes when your tomato plants don't get, you know, regular watering, they will crack on you, but it doesn't really affect the flavor like, I, like a bug or insect infestation would. And I probably just need to give them a little bit more support, too. They're starting to, it's starting to, uh, grow outward and bush out because I haven't been pruning them. And then over here is my cucumber plant. It's kind of wilting right now. Um, I was, I'm just trying to see if it's going to survive uh, any kind of disease because I had all the beetle damage early. But it is starting to show a couple of new little cucumbers on here. So I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that I get some more cucumbers from here. And then over here is where I had some lettuce. So I pulled that out and I will replant um, maybe another cute couple of cucumber plants in here. You plant two cucumbers per square. Alright, so I'm going to grab my tripod and I'll walk through the garden and get a few of my little harvests done and maybe prune a few things and cover up some tomatoes. Now I am going to go ahead and take these tomatoes right here because they do have a lot of cracking and I think we're getting rain this afternoon so I'm going to go ahead and take these and let those ripen up indoors. Go ahead and get these too. I do like for them to ripen on the vine but um, this one's starting to So whenever I harvest beans I like to use clippers and I'll go right above the top. I don't like to pinch off the end. They just seem to stay fresher longer as long as I keep the cap on. That's what I like to call it. It's like a cap on a water bottle. So that's how I like to harvest my beans. So I think I'll make a stir fry. Let's see how these onions are looking. Nice little onion there. Okay. And 
and I might have a carrot over here. Beautiful. If you have any questions, leave them down below the video, and I'll be more than happy to try to help you as best I can. And thanks so much for watching. Y'all have a beautiful day.